Hello Flosstube! Um, it's Nell and I am here with an update for you. It's been about three weeks and that seems to be about my normal length of time that I go between videos. I feel like two weeks feels a little rushed for me and a month feels too long, so three weeks it is. Um, I am here to do updates on a stitching and a brief update on the business and yeah, and I have a haul. And it's a pretty haul. It's a fun haul. I think you'll like it. I hope you'll like it. I like it. So I'll share that at the end. But um, how have you guys been? I have had an interesting couple of weeks. Mostly good. Um, I had to kind of take a pause from sewing project bags for the business because I had my sewing machine in the shop. Um, no major repairs, just a general kind of tune-up, and that lost a week. I lost a week of sewing there. And then, after I got my sewing machine back, I had a weird thing happen with my eyes. I had some eye pain that lasted um, about a week. And it wasn't severe, um, but it was enough that I didn't want to do something that was particularly strenuous, like sewing bags for hours at a time. Um, I did go see a doctor, and turns out it's okay. It's nothing dangerous or, or scary. It was just kind of a virus that affected the my muscles of my eyes. So looking straight ahead was fine, but anytime I like looked in my periphery, it was a painful experience. So it was very weird, but I am, I'm okay. Today I woke up with no pain at all, so it was just a virus and it just had to run its course, but I did lose a little bit of sewing time there. Um, so I'm a little bit, not behind, um, but I don't have the bags finished and ready quite yet. I'm expecting this next batch to be ready to post probably early next week. Um, so a week from today. By the way, it's Labor Day. Happy Labor Day to all you Americans. Hope you're having a nice day off. Um, we are. We're just, you know, normal day. But anyway, so um, the bags I believe will be ready to post next week. Probably early next week, maybe mid next week at the very latest. But they're coming. So thanks for being patient. And I do want to say also congratulations to Trisha. Three Owl Threads. She had her first bag sale for her cute little peekaboo bags. They're project bags. They're very similar to mine, but they have a little clear window in the front so you can see into them. That's a very cool idea. Love it. And she had a great first sale. So good job, Trisha. So glad that it went well and excellent. It was really fun to get to see your bags. I love the prints you picked and it's always fun to see other project bag makers and what they're doing. Um, but I do have a few little updates for you with regards to my business. Um, as many of you warned me would be the case, um, we've been in business now for about four months. Four and a half months, which is amazing. Um, I've gotten my business license. I got all my tax information so I can do my taxes with regards to the business. And as many of you warned me would be the case, um, we did a, a sit down and kind of look, look at my um, profits versus expenses versus time invested. And I am gonna raise my prices just a little bit, not a lot, don't panic. Hopefully this won't be off-putting for anyone, but just to help cover some of those hidden costs that, you know, getting my business license and the, the fees and the, you know, maintenance on my sewing machine and things that I hadn't really considered before I started. This is my first time having a small business. Um, so we are going to increase the prices by $2. So that every bag size just goes up by $2. Um, hopefully that's not Again, I hope that's not off-putting for anyone. Um, I think it's still a, a reasonable price. And so um, with beginning with this next batch that will be posted next week, the prices will be as follows. And I will update this in the file section on the, on the um, Facebook page. But the bitty bags will be $16. Uh, the original big bag, which is this size, my original size that fits an 8x8 Q-snap will be $20. Um, the bigger bag, which fits an 11 by 11, will be 24. And my biggest bag, the great big ones that hold 11 by 17 Q snaps, will be $28. So I will go ahead and update the files, um, and the prices will be reflected in the photos as they post, um, so you won't be confused. But I just wanted to give you all a heads up. Um, also, I wanted to let you know that I will not be posting any new 
grime guards with this particular batch. I have quite a back stock now of grime guards in all of the sizes um, that haven't sold and so I'm not going to make any new grime guards with this batch. Now, that being said, if someone buys a bag in this next batch and is just desperate to have a matching grime guard that coordinates with that bag and there's none in my shop available, message me, private message me, and we will work something out. I can make you a grime guard. However, I'm not going to take orders from just anyone. You have to buy a bag and want a grime guard to match that bag. Um, but since I know some people like that, people like having matching grime guards to the bags, I will make that available as an option. Um, but I do have a nice stock of grime guards in all sizes now, so we're gonna just go from those um, and we can work it out if you need one to match. Um, but just to let you know, as I always do, um, I wanted to let you know what the prints are going to be that are coming up. And you've seen previews of most of these in the pictures I posted on the group. But just really quickly, the first one is our Disney Princess sketches. That was a very popular print. That was the Disney princesses and the pencil art in kind of blacks and, and hot pinks and fuchsias. Um, the Keep Calm and Craft On is coming back. Um, this will be our third run of that one. That one's always popular. Um, the Vintage Parisian um, print that was also very popular in the picture I posted. Oriental Peacocks. The Peacocks are back. They're coming back. Um, Pretty Pastels was another one that people really liked. And then we have two new prints that I'm not going to show you, but I'll tell you what they're called, um, that it will be released with this batch. The first one I'm calling French Country Blue, um, and it's just kind of a, it's a floral uh, based bag. It's in a country French blue, obviously color, and also a, a butter yellow. Um, so if you like kind of that blue yellow combination you'll really like that one it's very pretty um so that's french country blue and then um another quote bag like my keep common craft on this one we're calling skillful sailor if you've ever heard that quote um smooth sailing never made a skillful sailor i think is what it is um and it's really a pretty print i think you'll like it a lot um and that one's kind of in blues and teals and aquas and it's it's nice. So there you go. One quick rundown one more time. Disney Princess Sketches, Keep Calm and Craft On, uh, Vintage Parisian, Oriental Peacocks, Pretty Pastels, and then the two new prints will be French Country Blue and Skillful Sailor. So get excited. Those will be posting probably early next week. Um, and I did want to mention I have a... Um, a, not a warning, a caveat, that some of the coordinating fabrics with these prints, this batch, are slightly different than in previous batches. Not all of them. Where I could, I got the same fabrics that I used last time. Sometimes fabrics get discontinued or aren't available, um, or sometimes I find something I like even better that I feel like is an even better match for that print, and so I can't guarantee that all the prints will be exactly the same. So if you've bought a bag in one of these, prints for me in the past, this time they may not be exactly the same coordinating fabrics. The prints are still the same, the main print, um, but the coordinating fabrics may differ a little bit. So there's your little heads up. Um, but that's enough about the business. If you are interested in buying project bags from me, I'll post the link to my Facebook group down below. It's Little Yellow House Crafts on Facebook and we love to have you join us. That's done. Let's talk about stitching. I got a lot of stitching done this month, or in, I guess in the last three weeks. Um, lots of stitching. Hmm, I don't even know where I want to start. Let's start with, I had two new starts, which were also two finishes, and I know you're all probably thinking they were my Brooks Books Advent Animals. They were not. <laughs> I didn't do any Brooks Books Advent Animals. I tried. I sat down with Harry the horse, and I really tried to start him and I could not do it. I think I'm a little burnt out on those little guys, which is a shame because I only have like nine left and I'm done. Um, but I'm just burnt out and I think I need a break from them. I just need to put them away for a couple of months, which means they probably won't be done in time for Christmas this year. Wah, wah. That's okay. 
I mean, I'm the one who gave myself that deadline. It would have been really fun, and I do still really want to finish them so I can do the tutorial on how I'm going to finish them all to match. But I can't stitch on them. I just am not feeling it. I'm not feeling the love, and I don't want to stitch on something that's not making me excited because it's my hobby. So Brooks Books Advent Animals have been put aside for the time being. I'll probably pick them back up in a month or two, but I had two different starts, and they were both finishes. Um, and they were my um, Halloween Lizzie Kate mystery sampler that I picked up in Branson um, back in May, June. When did we go to Branson? It was a couple videos ago. Um, I told you that I stopped by Cecilia Samplers, which is an LNS down in Branson, Missouri. And I picked up this Lizzie Kate kit. They had kitted up the whole thing, which was um, the mystery sampler club. Part one, this is part one. It was the very scary Lizzie Kate mystery sampler. This is from a couple of years ago. This is not the one this year. This year's I think is called Spooked. This was either last year's or the year before. And um, Cecilia Samplers had it kitted up as a kit all together with all three parts of the mystery sampler along with all of the little embellishments, the beads and the, and the buttons and things, and the fabric and all the thread because it's all done in Weeks Dye Works and they also included the fabric and the thread for the three little freebies that come with each of these parts. So each of these mystery samplers um, patterns come with a portion of the main sampler and they also come with a little freebie pattern and I did that too. So those were my two new starts and they were two finishes. Um, so I finished part one and I finished the freebie that goes with it. So here's the freebie, since it's little, just says haunted. And this is stitched on, I believe this is 30 count lilac linen by Weeks Dye Works, I believe. And Cecilia Samplers included all of the little pieces for the freebies. So this is lilac and it's stitched in Weeks Dye Works, hold on, coal. Weeks Dye Works Coal, which you can see is a black, gray, um, variegated. And this is the first time I've worked with over dyed flosses in about eight years, is the last time. And it was a Lizzie Kate, it was the last time I worked with Weeks Dye Works. And it was okay. I thought it was going to give me more issues and more OCD than it did. I did okay with it. And I think it's because. You know, the Weeks Dye Works, Gentle Arts, Classic Color Works variegations tend to be pretty subtle and not too intense. And so I did okay with it. It was weird getting used to stitching each X individually again because for years and years and years now, I've always stitched, I think it's called Dutch style, where you do one leg and then you go back. A lot of us stitch that way. It's weird not doing that with these flosses, but if you want the variegation to show, you, you have to stitch each X individually. And it took me probably two or three days to feel comfortable stitching that way again because I'm just used to stitching the way I always do. So there's Haunted. That's the little freebie that came with part one of the mystery sampler. And here is part one. And it's beautiful. I love it. This is stitched on, again, I believe this is 30 count, um, the color the linen I think is by Weeks Dye Works. I think they usually are the ones who do the 30 count. And this color I believe is called Tin Roof and it's the called for fabric in the pattern. Um, since Cecilia Samplers kitted up the whole thing for me, that's just what I used. Um, so there it is. And you can really see the variegation in those pumpkins um, and the acorns too. You can see it in the owl. I think it's really pretty. I'm enjoying it. It's it's easy to sit and stitch. The nice thing about Lizzie Kate's is they're pretty simple patterns to follow. They don't take a whole lot of concentration. So um, there it is. I've got a trailing thread here because I had some leftover thread and that's where the pattern ended. But I know that that motif is going to continue down in part two. So just left it hanging. Um, I have not added the beads or the button yet. So you can see the owl is kind of like eyeless. Eventually the owl will have little beads in his eyes and not look so freaky. Um, but I'm going to do those at the end, obviously, because I'm doing this in my Q-snap and I don't want to break my beads off. Um, 
some specialty stitches. Um, nothing too crazy. These triangles are a cross stitch edge and then satin stitched. And then down here, the leaves um, on this vine going around the acorns are also a satin stitch um, leaf, or I think they're satin stitch. Maybe they're not a satin stitch. They're, they all come from the same hole and then they go to different one. I don't know what it's called. I don't know what it's called, but it's pretty. Um, so a few little really simple um, specialty stitches. Oh, my needle minder. <laughs> it's from Minding My Minders and it's Hocus Pocus because who doesn't love Hocus Pocus and it's Halloween. So I pulled out a Hocus Pocus needle minder. So there you go. That was, those were my two new starts and also two finishes in the last three weeks. I'm really enjoying it. I'm looking forward to starting part two. I don't know if I'm going to start part two right away. Um, I might work on some of my other pieces for a little while before I jump right to part two. Um, but yeah, it's been good. It's been fun. I enjoyed having that new start and I am enjoying working with those over dyed flosses. As nervous as I was about it, I'm doing okay. I'm not getting too weird about it. Um, so that was that. My other whips that I've worked on, I've worked on three other whips um, in this time frame. The first one I'm going to show you is my Blue Bride. And I do have a pretty substantial update on her. Um, I mostly am excited about her because the color conversion is working. I was really nervous. Um, I know in my last video I showed you and I thought it was working, but I was just about to get into a part of the dress that had lots of ruffles and I was afraid you weren't going to be able to see them um, because the dress is so dark, but it's working. And I'll show you really quickly what part I worked on. So last time, sorry for the glare, last time I had done this big center swoop right here and then these two like little ruffle things at the bottom all that was done this time I did all this front part of her dress up to just under her sleeve so all of that ruffly bit right through there a lot of ruffles a lot of color changes and I decided that was going to be my my test area to make sure that this color conversion was working because if it didn't work after stitching all that I was going to scrap the project because I didn't want to spend all this time working on this beautiful lavender and lace only to be disappointed in the final product. Luckily, it turned out okay, and I'm gonna continue with it, and I'm really liking how it looks. So here is my Blue Bride conversion, as I call her, uh, with my TARDIS needle minder because it's blue, hello, and because I'm a Doctor Who fan. There you go. Ooh, try and get it in. There she is in all her glory. Isn't she gorgeous? I'm just loving it. So all those empty spaces are where beads will go um, when we're done. So they are left empty um, for now. But I love how it looks. I think the colors are working. It's, it's a deep, dark sapphire blue dress. And so it's a more subtle um, shadowing than in the white version, the original version. But I think it's working. Oh, there you can really see it. It's working well. I can see the ruffles and I think it's really beautiful. So there's Blue Bride. So this right here will be her sleeve with her hands and then the back of her dress is all over here. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. I'm not sure if I'm going to go up and do her sleeve or if I'm going to continue this way and try to finish the bottom of her dress before I go up. Actually, I think I've just decided I'm going to try and finish the bottom of her dress over here before I go up and do her her bodice, her sleeves, and then her, her face and hands. But, oh, I just think it's so pretty. I'm not sick of blues yet. I do have to take breaks from this project after I work on it for a couple days. I usually put it away and work on something else um, just because it is a lot of blues. But I still love these blues. I think they're so pretty. And I'm so pleased with how well the... Um, the conversion is working out because I was really nervous nervous for a while but anyway there's Blue Bride and she is coming right along so thank you to all of you who said nice things and were encouraging because you know I got a little nervous and some of you guys kind of talked me down from the ledge um, where I was feeling very very nervous about her so she's doing well next is Harry Potter and he is still on my lap frame so 
bear with me a moment. I'm gonna pop this off. I didn't work quite as much on him as some of my other projects, but I did get some done. Uh, last time you saw him, we had over here, we had Dumbledore and Snape done, and I think a little bit of Slughorn. Slughorn is done. I did Hagrid. I did Norbert, the Norwegian Ridgeback. I did Mad-Eye Moody, and then I have started um, Trelawney, Professor Trelawney. So, you know, progress is progress, and every one of those little guys feels like a little mini finish, which is part of the reason why we all love these Clouds Factory designs, don't we? Um, so, yeah. Coming right along. There you can see the side and I'm working my way over. So I will continue working on Trelawney. She's kind of sad that she's only halfway done, but I've just been too distracted by other projects. Um, so there's Harry Potter. Got a little bit of progress there. The last thing I worked on is something we haven't seen since Stitch Mania. <laughs> um, and I just was feeling like something different. There we go. I was feeling like something different and wanted to work project bag um, Wanted to work on one of my other pieces that I started for stitch mania. And so I pulled out the country store by told in a garden Which I started for stitch mania and I'm stitching this on um, uh, What am I stitching this on a Lugana I believe and it's I think it's in the color summer khaki or new khaki it's a khaki colored Lugana and I got a little bit more done on this one um, last time you saw I had these bolts of fabric done and these books and then the head and these drawers so I did everything above it I've added some of these baskets and cans and things and then I took the shelf up a little bit so I didn't work on it that much I think I worked on it for one night um, and just wanted something different. I'm using my uber sparkly um, rock candy needle minder from Nifty Needle Nannies because rock candy just feels like something you'd find in an old-timey country store, so that seemed appropriate, um, and it's so glittery. Oh my gosh, I could just stare at that thing. Julie, I love this needle minder. <laughs> anyway, so there's the country store. Still really enjoying this. I love how well the colors pop on this fabric. I think it's really nice. Um, like, like with some of the other things, I don't know when I'm gonna work on it next, um, but it's nice to have put a little, little more into that one. And yeah, still really like it. And so that is the country store. So those are all my whips I worked on in the last three weeks. We got the Lizzie Kate new starts and finishes. We got Blue Bride, we got Harry, and we got Country Store. Ta-da! Those are my whips. Um, plans for the next three weeks. I will probably continue her. I will probably start moving this direction um, and filling out more of her dress. Um, I will probably work some more on Harry Potter. Um, I wanna get, I wanna try and finish that band of teachers all the way across to the other side before I put that one away um, for a while. I will probably work... I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna start the next part of my Lizzie Kate mystery sampler, the Halloween one, or maybe I'll feel in the mood for a Brooks Books Advent Animal. I don't know. We'll see. Or I might pull something else out that I haven't worked on in a while. Um, last thing I want to show you in this update is a haul. I have a haul. It's not a big haul, um, but it is a haul and I haven't had a haul in a while. So it's been kind of fun to do a little bit of shopping. Um, the first haul I don't have to show you here, but it's just a piece of fabric and I can tell you why. I got this piece of tin roof linen for this Lizzie Kate um, sampler and it came in the in the package um, from Cecilia Samplers and I had it sitting out and I was looking at some of my patterns that I have in my stash and if you remember a few months ago I took advantage of the 50% off sale at Brooks Books um, Etsy shop and I got the four little women patterns that she has the Meg, Joe, Beth and Amy and they're um, they're in they're four individual patterns but I've always wanted to stitch them in a row 
um, all together because it's Little Women. It's one of my favorite books. So I had this fabric out and I had those patterns out and it was like a match made in heaven. The color was, it, it looks antique and kind of old, but it's a very neutral green gray taupe kind of color. I mean, look, it's just a really nice kind of neutral old timey color. And I have a huge fabric stash. I, I probably could have found something that would have worked great in my stash. But I just loved how those colors of those four little women girls, sorry, my eye itches, eh, how the colors of their dresses popped when I was looking at this. And, um, and I did a floss toss and it's perfect. It's <laughs> floss toss. That's for you, Adele. Get your mind out of the gutter. Um, floss toss on this fabric and I loved it. I loved it. It was so perfect. And so I just said, what the heck? I'm just going to order another piece of tin roof linen for that. So I got that piece actually in a 35 count, I believe, or 36 count. It's a smaller count and it's a, it's an odd shape. It's kind of long and skinny, but that's to put the four girls next to each other. And I love it. So I don't have that to show you, but it's this just in a 36 count. And I, that's for my little women, um, patterns that I got. And so I might start that. I don't know. Now that I have the fabric for it, I just loved how it looked. So I'm, I am sorely tempted to start that one. Maybe I will. I don't know. So that's the first bit of haul. Um, the second bit of haul is boring. And again, I don't have it to show you because I'm not prepared enough apparently. Um, but I got a few more spools of Krennic that I needed. Um, I needed a few more spools of Krennic for um, finishing my Save the Stitches, which has been put away for the last few months, but I probably will be pulling that out again because um, I want to get some black work done. I don't know. I'm feeling the call for like black work and heart anger and stuff. So I might do some of that. So I needed a few more spools of Krennic. So I ordered that. They're just in the same colors I had already. So it's the three high luster colors of Krennic in the gold, the silver, and the copper. I don't remember what the numbers are, but they're gold, silver, and copper, but in their high luster. So the HL. And that's it. I ordered some more of that. Um, then this is where it gets a little more exciting. Um, I got some patterns and they're all electronic patterns. So I'm going to insert some pictures here in a minute. But the way this started is that I was, I had finished my long may she wave Barbara Anna designs um, a while ago. And I was talking to Steph at Lindy Stitches and we were just talking back and forth in the comments about how much we enjoy Barbara Anna designs and how, you know, I didn't know, didn't realize I was going to love that pattern so much. And I just loved it. And so she's working on, I think, a, a Barbara Anna and has a few more on her wish list. And she was asking me which ones I wanted to start next of Barbara Anna designs. And I did have a little wish list. I just hadn't purchased any of them yet. And, um, so it sent me back over to creativepoppypatterns.com, um, which is where I got my long may she wave. And I started looking through the ones that have kind of been on my wish list and I bought two. <laughs> I bought two, uh, Barbara Anna pieces from creativepoppypatterns.com. Um, I really like that website. Barbara Anna has most of her designs available there through instant download. Um, and they're a little less expensive than ordering them from like one, two, three stitch in a hard copy. So, you know, instant gratification coupled with a little bit cheaper and I am there, baby. Um, I print all of my PDF patterns out because I'm a, I'm still an old school. I like to work from a hard copy. Um, but I went ahead and got two more. So I'm going to show you the ones I got. Um, the first one I got is called Let It Snow and I'll insert a picture here. So that's Let It Snow by Barbara Anna Designs and I love it. I just think it's so cute. I love that it's on like the key and it's Christmassy and, and it's fun. So that's uh, the first one I got. The second one I got is called The Love and Wisdom Sampler and it's one of her older pieces. I haven't seen a lot of people stitch this but I'm going to insert a picture here. And I love it. It's so Nell. It's so Nell. It's this kind of sweet religious poem verse thing. And then it's kind of folk art and really bright, vivid, rich colors. And I just love it. And I'll tell you what the, um, 
the little phrase says, it says, there are three things that last forever, faith, hope, and love. Yes, I am with you always until the very end of time. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And you guys know I'm religious and I love Bible verses and things like that. So that's the Love and Wisdom Sampler by Barbara Anna Designs. And I'm really excited about that one. I'm now going to talk about a different part of my haul and then I'll come back to the other two patterns because these go with those two. Uh, a couple days ago, maybe last week, I think it was a week ago, last Monday, someone posted on the Stitch Mania group that there were oops packs available in the Dinky Dyes Etsy shop again. And they tend to sell out pretty quickly. Um, and if you don't know what they are, Dinky Dyes um, is a company that dyes, um, I think they do cottons. Do they do cottons? I know they do silks because that's what I bought. Um, they dye silks and I've heard wonderful things about them. There's quite a few you or, uh, floss tubers out there who have done the Dinky Dye seasonal samplers. And I decided to go ahead and get some of these oops packs. And the reason was, is I want to use them on my love and wisdom sampler. It's just such a rich, vibrant piece. And I thought, you know, here's an opportunity to try some dinky dye silks. They're at a, a pretty steep discount when they're in the oops packs. Um, and so I thought, here's a perfect opportunity to try some dinky dye silks at a really reasonable price. And I have the perfect pattern that I want to use them on this um, Love and Wisdom sampler. And so I bought two oops packs from dinky dyes. These are my first dinky dye silks, guys. And I'm really excited to finally get to show them to you because now I can take them out of the bags and put them away. But they're just so nicely packaged. I didn't want to take them out. So the first one, this is pack number one, and it's blues and greens. 20 skeins of, of dinky dye silk in all blues and greens and oh aren't they beautiful so lovely I love all these rich greens green is my second favorite color after hot pink and they're lovely I haven't even taken them out of the the bag to, to fondle them and stroke these beautiful silks yet because I wanted to be able to show them to you in this nicely organized bag um, but those are the first ones I got. And then the second one, I needed some more like rich autumnal colors, reds and golds and purples. So I got this pack number 10 assortment, 25 colors. Got a few more greens. I think some of the greens might be repeats, but that's okay. And then I got purples and maroons and reds. And then look at these gorgeous golds over here. There's a couple of kind of crazy over dyes in here that are a little rainbowy for my taste. But what I might do with those, if I don't end up using them, I might pull those out and set them aside for a giveaway. Cause I know a lot of people love those like really rainbowy, like this one and this one with like the teal and the peach. And there's like a few over here, sorry for the glare, a few over here that are really rainbowy. And I just don't think I'll ever use them cause that's not my style, but I might save them for a giveaway because I think they're lovely and I know some of you love to stitch with that kind of stuff. So those are my dinky dies and I'm really excited. Um, they're beautiful. They sent, as they always do, a few little freebies. Um, and so I did pull these out and stroke these and I got to feel how lovely and soft these silks are. Um, but they always send you like a little pack of freebies as a thank you. And they're just like pieces I think they have left over that aren't enough to make a full skein. Um, and so they send them out as freebies. And I mean, they still say what the color is and stuff like that. It's just not a full, full skein of it. So, oh, terrible glare. So there you go. That was my order from Dinky Dye's Etsy shop. Um, the oops packs are really an affordable way to try silks. If you want to try stitching with silks and specifically Dinky Dye silks, um, it's a great way to do it. I believe they're already sold out of their oops packs, but I'm sure they will have more of them again. Um, they usually do. So that was that fun part of my haul. Um, the last thing were two more patterns that I got from uh, creativepoppypatterns.com. And again, I will show um, these in a, I'll insert the picture and I feel really badly, but I cannot remember how to pronounce the name of the designer. This is a new designer. I haven't seen a lot of her stuff in the past, but I really like it. Um, she's, I believe Japanese, her name, 
sounds very Japanese to me. Um, and she does a very colorful folk art inspired designs. And then she also does kind of the little, the little people the same way that, you know, um, Clouds Factory or Pumpkin, Frost Pumpkin Citry or some of these other groups that do like the little pixel people. They're very popular right now. You know what I'm talking about. And the reason I bought these two patterns of hers is that I've been looking for years now for a, a cross stitch piece that is international. And what I mean by that is I want a piece that has people from all over the world. Now, before you're like, hey, what about Pumpkin Passport and the Clouds Factory um, stitch alongs? They're all international this year and postcards from the world. The thing I've been looking for is specifically these international costumes. Okay, some of you may know, and I think I've shared this in the past, that when I was in college, I danced with the International Folk Dance Ensemble. I toured with them for three years. And we did dances from all over the world. And so we wore costumes from all over the world. And I loved it. It was a huge part of my college experience, made some of the best friends I've ever had, um, developed this really deep love for these cultures all over the world and their folk dance styles as well as their costumes, their folk costumes, um, because we wore them and they're gorgeous. Our costume boxes when we go on tour are like 50 pounds each because of all the embroidery and the beautiful headdresses and I mean it was amazing. And so I thought I'd take this opportunity to share a little bit of my past with you. Um, in the past I've had, uh, I had one in particular, one sweet subscriber ask if she could see like pictures of when I did this and so I picked out four pictures that I'm gonna insert right now that show you me when I was dancing in some of these costumes and national dress so I will put down at the bottom what country they are from and here you go So there you go. There's Nell in her dancing days <laughs> doing some of these costumes. But you can see what I mean by how rich and vibrant and beautiful these national costumes are. So I've been looking for a pattern that had those and they're hard to find. A lot of international pieces focus more on places um, and not so much on the people. And even if they have people, they're not usually dressed in their like national costume. And this lady at Creative Poppy has two patterns. One's called International Kids, and the other one's called International Kids 2. Um, and all together, they are, I think, 12 or 15 kids from around the world dressed in their national costume. It's very, it's a small world-ish. It feels very, it's a small world. So here they are. Here's the first one. So that's International Kids, and then here's the second one. And that's International Kids too. So I found a pattern that has the national costumes. I still think I might alter a few little things to reflect more of what like I wore if I did a dance from that place. And again, Steph at Lindy Stitches, I know what you're what you mean now because there's no African cultures represented in this thing. We did African dances <laughs> and there's no African culture. So I might take out one or two of the kids that are just kind of more generic and replace them with a kid in an, in an African costume, an African kid. Um, so I might do some tweaking, but I finally found a pattern that showcases all of these beautiful national costumes. So there you go. There's a little glimpse into my dancing days and some of what I did in college. I hope that was fun for you. And I'm really excited to have found this, um, this designer and her 
patterns, I think they're beautiful. And it feels very, it's a small world. In fact, I was kind of toying with the idea. I think I'll do them in three rows because they're all holding hands and I want to keep that. So I'll do the three rows all together. And then I was thinking around the outside, I might do the lyrics from the It's a Small World ride from Disneyland. So across the top, it would say, there is just one moon and one golden sun. And then down the first side, but a smile means friendship to everyone. And then um, there's so much that we share that it's time we're aware it's a small world. Sorry guys, my videos uh, just cut out. I think I'm running out of space. So that's all I have for you. I'm done. Um, that's my haul, my updates, shop updates. Um, go check me out on Facebook if you're interested. Um, and otherwise, I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. Happy stitching and have a great Labor Day if it's Labor Day where you are. Um, but love you guys a lot. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.